Well, here we go. Thank you guys for checking this out. If you're online, we're doing our Deeds of the Flesh series. And this week, we're going to be talking about witchcraft. Um, is it okay uh, or is it not? Um, so check it out. If you like it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe, share this video with anybody you want. Maybe you know somebody who has the same question, if they should be into witchcraft or not. Um, and you've been wanting to send them something to help answer that question, this may or may not be that video. So we'll see how it goes. Um, of course, we have a live audience, so uh, you know if there's any laughter or clapping, it's not a laugh track, although that would be pretty cool if we did have one. So uh, we are in Galatians chapter 5, verse 19, and we're just kind of reading on down uh, to through 21. We're not going to read it all today, but that's where we're at. If you guys want to check out these uh, these uh, these topics that we call deeds of the flesh, stuff that the Lord is not into. And uh, today we're going to talk about witchcraft. So witchcraft is an interesting topic because the word itself that's used in the Greek is this word pharmakia. It's the word that we get the word pharmacy or pharmaceuticals from. So an in in interesting tie-in there. So it would have, um, you know, some... Uh, you know, uh, something to do with like potions, but it's not just um, uh, isolated to that. So this letter was written to, you know, a pagan culture. And in, you know, pagan cultures, there's oftentimes a lot of witchcraft and, um, you know, um, you know, seances or, you know, all, all this stuff. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. But this word pharmakia, I thought was really interesting how you know, years later, we go on to uh, use that word to, um, you know, name our, our pharmaceuticals and our pharmacies and stuff like that. I just want to say right off the bat, I don't think that because of the word pharmakia is in the Bible as like, a, hey, don't do this. I don't think that that translates into uh, medicine is bad um, because there wasn't pharmacies in this time. So, you know, Paul is not talking about a pharmacy. And he's, he's not talking about pharmaceuticals. He's not talking about the aspirin you take uh, when you have a headache. I guess maybe one could make a case to say like, well, these things are some sort of concoction that, you know, produces some desired result. But I don't believe that, that there's a, a spiritual sort of witchcraft agenda uh, tied to those things, you know. I'd say that might not be so true when you're talking about like methamphetamine, heroin, stuff like that, drugs that people take to create a euphoric state that, you know, for my own personal use with those drugs in the past, there's a lot of spiritual craziness going on with those sort of things. So I could see like a tie in to that word pharmakia in certain substances that are made that would, um, yeah, enhance or, or change our, 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 our being. But I would say for the most part, I don't think this is making a case of not taking medicine. So if you're out there and you're hearing this and you're like, well, I'm taking these and they're saving my life, I would say keep taking those. Um, I'm not making a case for that. But if you're making some sort of potions or you're into some sort of witchcraft, you are going to want to stop doing that because as it says here in Galatians, um, it says people at the very end of this, it says those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And that's a pretty big statement. And what do I think that that means? I don't think that this is talking about, you know, as we go through these like, you know, hangups that we have or, you know, sins that we fall into from time to time, because we're all going to have, have different struggles throughout our life. It's the putting into practice sinful things apart from repentance Giving it a green light is what I think the, the Bible is talking about here. It's like we, we're, we're called out of that stuff. We're not, we're not supposed to take that stuff with us. And I think that when it comes to witchcraft and stuff like this and, and things that are spiritual, sometimes people like to take these things and intertwine them with their faith in Jesus. And we've talked about this a little bit throughout videos and, and just why it, it, we shouldn't do that. We talk about idolatry and we shouldn't bring in other gods. Um, we shouldn't bring in spiritual practices that, that are, are actually sorcery or witchcraft. Um, it's just not a good idea. And uh, why is it not a good idea? Well, you are playing with spiritual forces that aren't God. 
<laughs> and that is not a good scenario. It doesn't end well. So even if you are, you know, using Ouija boards or whatever you might be doing and you're saying, well, I'm having all these encounters and these experiences, I don't doubt that. I don't, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not going to tell you that stuff doesn't, you know, doesn't work or doesn't, you know, connect with something. M my worry is like, what is that something that, that you're making connections with? And I would say this for, you know, um, psychics and, you know, going to, to people anywhere outside of the Lord to try to get answers for your life or try to get, you know, some sort of blessing or some sort of healing or, or whatever it might be. I think those things can very easily fall under the umbrella of witchcraft and, and sorcery, even though they might seem good. My question is, is like, what spirit are you engaging? Because here's the thing, you can get everything that you need from the Holy Spirit. We don't need to go elsewhere. We can go straight to God. If we need healing, God, God can heal. If we need to know, like we're curious about even our destiny or our future, God can speak into that. God can do all these things. He can solve problems in our life. He can give us wisdom. He can give us direction. And it's all the same spirit. So it's really important that we remember that if we're going outside of, of, of the Lord to, to have a spiritual encounter, um, you might encounter something and it might even seem good, but chances are um, you're playing with fire and at some point you're opening up the door to something that is probably malevolent or, you know, wants to actually bring stuff into your life that, that you don't want. Um, so, you know, I, I, on, on that note, I, I was in uh, Salem, Massachusetts once. It just happened to be that I was in Salem, Massachusetts on Halloween night. Um, I think this was like five or six years ago. And it's like Mardi Gras in uh, Salem, Massachusetts. It's crazy. They have rides going. They have, uh, you know, they have, um, uh, you know, theme parks and everybody's out on the streets and they have all these like, you know, crazy uh, graveyards and stuff like that, which, you know, on, especially on Halloween night are pretty creepy to go check out. But Salem has this rich history of um, witchcraft and this history started you know, way back in the day, there was this, this belief that certain people were witches. It actually turned out that they weren't, mo most likely weren't witches. And, uh, you know, the fear of the people, they actually killed a lot of people that were probably innocent. Super sad. So you can learn about that, Salem witch trials and all that stuff. But one of the interesting side effects of that history is that it did sprout a pretty robust, like, uh, witchcraft culture in Salem. So it started out as being afraid of the possibility of having witches in their town and they killed a bunch of innocent people. Well, Salem became known for witchcraft and next thing you know, all kinds of people that practice witchcraft when I was there were actually there. You can go through what they call the Witch Museum in Salem, Massachusetts, and they'll tell you all the history of what happened, which is actually, you know, it's pretty interesting. I went through there. I learned a lot. But the weird thing is at the end, you come out of there and you can go through these exhibits where they try to show you how witchcraft today is actually like good witches and it's, it's not really a bad thing and these aren't the evil witches. And, and I just tell you right now, there is no good witchcraft. That, that's not a real thing. And the Bible talks about like the, the devil, you know, likes to show up as an angel of light, likes to convince us that, hey, you know what, maybe he's... There's a good side to this, and, and I would just strongly, strongly encourage you, if that's you and, and you're, you're dealing with that, to understand that if you're not connecting with the Holy Spirit, you might be connecting with other spirits, but these, these things are not for you. And so I always want to go back to the Word of God, and if, if the Lord gives a warning on these sort of things, I want to take that seriously, because I think out of all the things we talked about, there's all have spiritual consequences to any of these things. But when you're, you're intentionally going after spirits that are not the Holy Spirit, um, th there should be a lot of red flags there. And uh, again, I, I'll just end with this because I think this is the most important piece to remember is that God can fill every need. We don't have to go outside 
of the Holy Spirit to get answers. We don't have to go outside of the Holy Spirit to get healing. We don't have to go outside of the Holy Spirit to, to experience, you know, get prophecy and to get, you know, insight, wisdom and direction for our life. So I would strongly encourage anybody out there who maybe that's you and you've been, you know, you, 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 you love Jesus, but you also love kind of messing around with some of the dark arts, if you will, um, to, I would, I would just get, get rid of those and just trust that God is more than capable of giving you everything that you need. And, and he, he wants to, he wants to speak into our life and he wants to, you know, bring healing and restoration and give wisdom and give direction and even give answers to our future. Um, so we don't really need to go anywhere else, right? So that's my thoughts on witchcraft. Uh, biblically speaking, I would, I would stay far away from it. I would just, you know, I'd, I'd find a church that, hey, that loves to press into the, the presence of God, that loves the gifts of the Spirit, that is open to all that stuff. And, and I, would, I would go that route rather than um, searching for, for answers uh, from spiritual forces that, you know, might have it out for you. So anyway, we'll be back next week. We're going to talk about hostility, strife, jealousy, and outbursts of anger. So we're going to lump all those together because those all sound like a pretty bad attitude. And uh, we're going to talk about what does the Bible say about having a bad attitude. And I'm pretty excited to do that. So love you guys. We'll see you soon.